Next up, we have uh, Steve Lowe. <laughs> Steve is a graphic designer, a videographer, a musician, a non-dancer, <laughs> an ideator who also makes up words. Uh, ideator? Ideator. Ideator? All right, we're trying a lot of new words tonight, folks. Last names, made up words by Steve, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling up here, I apologize. An ideator. He started 127 Creative in 2015 with two partners and is currently developing an interactive app-driven game called Search. He loves startups, especially the ones that change the world. He doesn't see the point of snow after January 1 or mushrooms or cats. He's chocolate and probably red wine dependent as well, just FYI. Please welcome Steve to the stage as he enlightens us, us about the worst, most embarrassing, most expensive marketing mistake I ever made. Steve, everybody. Hopefully that's not right now. <laughs> hey, everybody. So as a guy who does marketing all day long, this is basically me standing up here confessing my most embarrassing moment ever. The date was Saturday, November 18th, 2017. Uh, so I've had less than a year to recover from this. At the end of last year, I was in Pittsburgh test marketing a game that I created with uh, two other partners, my brother Kevin and a graphic designer named Kim. Uh, there was about a month of bad decisions leading up to this moment, but I'll never forget sitting in a bar realizing that I had just spent tens of thousands of dollars on the exact wrong thing. Let me tell you about the game. Imagine if Pokemon and geocaching hooked up and had a baby, and then that baby hooked up with the amazing race and they had a baby. You might have something like this game that we call Search. It's a new kind of game called a photo race that's made possible by the Search app. Searchers race to explore their cities, looking for specific landmarks. They play for fun, for charity, even for cash. In the case of Search Pittsburgh, people were searching for $10,000. About a month before Pittsburgh, back in October of last year, we held a beta test right here in Westminster before Pittsburgh. Uh, John Allen right there won the third place prize. And this is where things get crazy. In Westminster, we learned a lot about how people played the game. And of course, we wanted to make a whole lot of revisions, change the fundamental structure of the game, and add new features to make it more gamified. Also, the original plan for After Westminster wasn't to go to Pittsburgh. It was to go to Houston, Texas. And we had already spent several days, a couple of different trips in Houston to build the game. But after Westminster, my brother Kevin suggested that we try a more medium-sized market. Kim and I agreed. We thought it made sense, so we pivoted. But all of a sudden, we had less than a month to revamp the app to include the new features, to create an entire photo race in a city we've never been to, and to market the photo race so people play over the race weekend. Well, my brother Kevin uh, had some ideas for the marketing side, and that was fine because Kim and I were focused on other things. And one of his ideas is, let's set up an ambassador program. Let's find 100 ambassadors. We'll give them each uh, a box of uh, uh, 1,000 cards printed by Cone Creative, and every card has their own little uh, promo code. And we'll tell the ambassadors, for everybody that you get to sign up and play our game with your code, you get a dollar. And then if the winner of Search Pittsburgh uh, enter with your code, you get an another $1,000. You can do whatever you want with the code, put it on social media, whatever. So we recruited bartenders and college students to become ambassadors. Bartenders because they meet lots of people and college students because they thought we thought they'd be uh, hungry for a little more money. We, uh, we recruited some Steelers influencers to post on uh, Instagram and to you know, write tweets. Kevin, my brother, big NFL fan, hates the Steelers, as any good human would, but a big <laughs> NFL fan. And then we also engaged, had a couple people doing like a more traditional social media campaign, and they decided we should target avid app users and people that like to play games on their phones and even higher stakes people like gamblers, because there's a lot of money at stake. Well, the race weekend came, and we continued to hit the bars and, and recruit ambassadors while we watched the database to see how many people were playing. We were hoping for hundreds of people, perhaps thousands, we got dozens. And on that Saturday night, we're sitting in a bar feeling dejected, and Kim was, she was ticked. She looks around and she says, nobody wants to play our game. Look at these people. Everyone is lazy. Everyone would rather spend $100 getting drunk than $20 to get off their asses and play our game. And I tell you, at that moment, I had an epiphany. It was kind of like realizing where babies come from for the very first time. Kim says, Everyone 
would rather play, spend $100. Everyone is lazy. And I realized in that moment, sitting in this bar, I thought, not everyone is lazy. Just everyone we just targeted. <laughs> you see, we missed what I call the law of predisposition. Don't Google that. I just made it up. <laughs> the law of predisposition says to target people who are predisposed to do what you want them to do. It's not that people that frequent bars wouldn't play our game. It's not that Steelers fans or football fans wouldn't play our game. It's not that college students, we happen to hit Carnegie Mellon to recruit ambassadors who are a little bit upper class and a little less incentivized. It's not that they wouldn't play our game, but they're not necessarily predisposed to play our game. You see, people that actually get out of their house and play Pokemon, people that actually get out of their house and geocache, people that just get out of their house, period, and want to go outside and do something other than sit, those people are more predisposed to do our kind of game. And that's not who we spend tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> targeting. So we missed the law of predisposition. It was the most embarrassing, most expensive, worst marketing mistake I've ever made. And I will never, ever, 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 ever screw that again. Thanks. <laughs>